let us say you have uh, a case <coughs> in which your diagnosis is a supracondylar fracture, a malunited supracondylar fracture humerus. The second question is, why do you say so? So there's history of injury. Fall on an outstretched hand in a child. There is pain, swelling, deformity, loss of function around right elbow. The relationship of three bony landmarks is maintained. So this is the differential diagnosis of intercondylar fracture or posterior dislocation elbow. But is altered in relation to humerus. The lateral and the medial supracondylar ridges are painful initially but irregular later on. So this is why it is a fracture supracondylar. These are the reasons why it is a fracture supracondylar humerus. Now, why is it malunited? So why the components of malunion are this is the lower end of humerus the conoid and the coronoid fossa the head of radius here the ulna the malunion can be on three axes. Number one is antero-posterior axis. And on the antero-posterior axis, there can be varus or valgus. The varus can be carrying angle is decreased, lost or reversed. or there can be a valgus. The valgus is usually produced by lateral condyle fracture, lateral condyle fracture, which covers the lateral epicondyle and the capitula. This is the lateral condyle fracture. It is pulled out by the brachioradialis insertion and it leads to a valgus deformity and this valgus can produce tardy ulnar nerve palsy. So on the anteroposterior there can be varus or valgus but in a supracondylar fracture usually there is varus. This varus is also called as gun stock deformity. On the supero inferior axis, there can be either internal rotation or external rotation. Internal rotation or external rotation. All right. And on the side to side axis or lateral medial axis, there can be flexion or extension. So we 
name the axis we say supero inferior inferior axis there can be internal rotation external rotation and on side to side axis there can be flexion or extension usually extension is more common usually internal rotation is more common finally the component of mal union is over riding now let us see each of these problems so if there is a virus then if you look at the humerus lower end you would find that this carrying angle is decreased all right so here is the radius and this deformity is varus now how do you say how much is the varus so if in a flexed elbow in a flexed elbow the radius would be here the ulna would be here in a flexed elbow so if there is a varus deformity if there is a varus deformity if this is the deformity then supination will increase and pronation will decrease okay so compare it both sides if pronation is less and supination has increased the lower end of the humerus has been directed inwards is this clear same way if you want to say internal rotation or external rotation then with a flexed elbow if there is a internal rotation at the lower end then internal rotation of the shoulder will increase and external rotation will decrease external rotation will decrease and internal rotation will increase okay and if you want to say flexion extension and if there is a extension deformity extension will increase and flexion will decrease so you have to diagnose mal union on all three axes secondly if there is over riding the arm length will reduce measured from the tip of the orthochronon to the lateral epicondyle arm length will reduce so you have to say there is a supracondylar fracture then you have to say it is united it is united because there is absence of localized tenderness is absent no abnormal movement transmitted movement present and function nearly normal and you say mal united if you can demonstrate it by any of these physical signs okay now what do you do you find out whether it is functional or not so if it is functional not gross you leave it alone and you must also know that remodeling will adjust for flexion extension will adjust for rotation but will not adjust for 
virus. Therefore, a significant amount of virus would need correction. So, you assess the patient for fitness, for anesthesia and surgery. Apply general anesthesia. Or brachial anesthesia. Use a triceps. Splitting approach. Use a tricep splitting approach. And if this is the polychronon process and the ulna is directed this way, there is an angle between this and the humerus. This is the angle of correction that you need to apply. And if you would open or close a wedge, that wedge must be above the tip of the olecranon. And usually, how much wedge you should remove from the lateral side is the question. So, if you remember your trigonometry, if this is a 30 degree correction required, then tan of 30 degrees is perpendicular upon base, which means this. if this is 1, this is 2. Tan of 30 degrees is equal to half. Right? So at this point, you will take out a wedge 15 degrees above and 15 degrees below to correct 30 degrees. So you would refer to this tan of 30 degrees to correct the virus so that at least there is 6 degrees of carrying angle. Right? So tricep splitting approach and this calculation of correction and how much waste to remove the level of ostotomy has to be the cora all right you know how to calculate the cora yes sir there have to be 15 degrees above and 15 degrees below the line. You know the width by the length of the K wire you inserted. And by that you can calculate the amount of wedge, lateral wedge that you should be able to remove. So this is how you do a corrective osteotomy. In the case of supracondylar fracture. When do you do it and how do you do it? So, Cora is the, is the angle between line, the axis of the forearm and axis of the arm, with the arm in extension. If the Cora is in the olecranon fossa, you go above the, just above the olecranon fossa. You put in a K wire from lateral to medial, find out the width of the osteotomy and how, if you have if it is a 30 degree correction that you have to do then half one fourth would be above the line and one fourth would be below the line and you do a close wedge osteotomy that way so this is how you correct a 
mal united supracondylar fracture and supracondylar fracture is the commonest mal union that you would encounter there is also another mal union and that is a mal united colysis fracture but in the mal united colysis fracture the usual problem is a short radius and a dislocated lower end of ulna so you see there is a muscle which is called as the pronator quadratus here so you excise the ulna below the pronator quadratus so that this end doesn't go up and down in pronation supination the lower end of the ulna doesn't go up and down and the second thing is that there is a disc here there is a disc here which attaches the radius to the styloid process so you leave the styloid process so that the disc attachment to the ulnar collateral ligament remains intact okay so this is called as direct operation called as a deformity has to be corrected a mal united fracture has to be corrected if indicated especially if there is a fracture shaft of femur and you are wanting to do a tkr later you want the medullary canal to be in the correct axis so you will correct that mal union first see what effect it has on osteoarthritis and then later on do a total knee replacement because all your jigs would fit in a in the medullary canal distal medullary canal yes, and you don't want it to be wrongly aligned okay so this is in general about mal union but the case that you get for mal union is a mal united so supracondylar fracture you have to defend why fracture why united why mal united is this clear